This is a quick follow-up to video 78. I've received a few questions and uh, in particular people are asking how you might search for multiple names. So uh, video 78 looked at a single name. This video will look at multiple names. So here is our data set. Names are in column B. There are a number of data points to the right of that, column C through L. That's what we'll be extracting. And across on the right here, these are the names of people that we can select from a list. First option we're going to look at is that you have the ability to select up to six names, for example. And if you click the black box here, that runs a macro and that searches firstly for name one, returns all the values for name one, then all the values for name two, then all the values for name three and four and so on. Let's click it and see what happens. So there we are, we have name one has returned about 30 records and then name two and name three and name four. So that worked pretty well. Um, the second option over here is that we use an OR criteria. Now I've just stuck to three names here to keep it simple. Um, I've got two selected, let's select a third one, delete them all actually and do new ones so that it's clear that something is happening. So we've got three new names, if I click the button, you can see the screen flickering a little bit there, that's because I haven't turned off a uh, screen updating function, I can show you how to do that in a second. So, um, difference between this and the first option is that it searches for all three at once so it returns them in the order that they appear in the data set rather than by player name. Now if we go into the code window we can just check out what's happening uh, on the developer tab click Visual Basic and it'll open up our Visual Basic window and we can see that I've got two modules here one's called Combine Search one's called Consecutive Search so the Consecutive Search is the one that I did first where we look for one name, find all the records and then look for the next name. So here's the code which you can look through. What's happening in this code is a few things really. Um, I've tried to comment it out. So you declare variables, you clear the old search results and then you loop through the first name and then the second name and then the third name. So it's a loop within a loop which we can see down below once you've done your declarations the key code is here for t equals 1 to target count so 1 is the first name and target count is how many total names you have so I left room for six names and the loop starts with the first name it goes through every row in the data set that is the second loop here once it gets to the end of the data set, it goes back to the beginning and starts again with the next name. The last line of code says search complete message box. You don't have to have that at all. If you don't want that, um, you can just put a little comma on there and you'll see the code goes green. I'm going to leave it on for now. Whereas on the combined search page, what I have created in comparison to the first one, is that we've declared three names and below that we have exactly indicated where those names are. So cells B1, B2 and B3. There is only a single loop this time and each time it looks at a row of data it checks for the first name or the second name or the third name. If it finds any of those then it's true and it returns the row of data. I mentioned that you can stop the screen flickering and I'm going to show you that now. Um, the easiest way to do that is right at the top of the procedure either before or after your variable declaration. So I'm going to do it just after that. And if I type application and a dot there's a whole bunch of things appear. This one's called screen updating and it's prompting me to do a lot of this stuff so I'm simply going to say false there I'm going to copy that and right at the end 
I'm going to say true because it's good to turn it back on sometimes it's helpful to have it on so turn it off at the start turn it back on at the end so that's the code often the easiest way is to have a look at the code yourself edit it a little bit and see if you can make it work feel free to email me for a copy of this file otherwise I'll see you for more videos again soon